In my opinion, the LLY is the best generation of the Duramax Turbo Diesel V8 engine lineup, and I'm going to explain why in this video. So just for reference, I made this quick chart here showing the Duramax generations from 2001 to today. So these are the years, um, just for your information, for those who don't know, and I, it's possible I got the years wrong on this one too, but uh, generally speaking, this is what it is. So this engine was produced from 2004 and a half through 2005. So the reason I put some 2006 is because some 2006 model year trucks are indicated on the VIN as an LLY engine, but in that model year, I believe it's more of like a detuned LBZ, and they just use the LLY nameplate to uh, differentiate it from the actual LBZ. I think it's like the eighth digit if it's a one uh, or a two, but that's a kind of a different subject for a different video. The LOY was also put in some medium duty trucks like the uh, Top Kick and the Kodiak. So I've got two columns. Uh, on the left obviously is fact and opinion. Um, go ahead and call me out if I'm wrong on anything, uh, but let's get right into this. So number one, the LLY comes with the largest factory turbo. And you can see it's the Garrett, I got the part number up there. It is a 64 millimeter that supports up to 560 horsepower, uh, which is pretty cool. And I believe that it has the most tune only potential with the possible exception of the L5P. Number two is price. This is possibly the most affordable Duramax. Uh, with the possible exception of the LB7. Um, however, the LB7s are becoming more sought after because they are completely emissions free, and that's the only generation in the Duramax lineup that is completely emissions free. Uh, so, this one's sort of debatable, that's why I put the question mark. If you need one of these trucks for work, or just to haul, you know, travel trailer or something, and you don't have money to drop on an L5P or LML, for, um, for what it's worth, I believe you're getting a pretty darn good value. Jumping right into numbers three and four, this truck is pre-diesel particulate filter and pre-diesel exhaust fluid. So you don't have to mess with uh, clogged DPFs and the expense that comes with that, as well as diesel exhaust fluid, which is pretty expensive actually. It's cheaper up front but it's also cheaper to maintain because you're not gonna have these emissions issues that these modern trucks might run into. And same with the d diesel exhaust fluid. I mean, that stuff's like 50 bucks a box uh, in places. So now the LBZ um, doesn't have DPF or DEF either. Uh, and a lot of people just like the LBZ because it's the newest truck that's pre-DPF. But the LLY has the same, if not less, emissions equipment on it than the LBZ, and it's the same body style truck, it's the same interior. Your LLY and LBZ are still gonna have your EGR, your exhaust gas recirculation system. So that's just, that's a wash between the LBZ and the LLY. Number five, this truck has the true Allison 1000 series transmission. This transmission was built by Allison. It's not an Allison branded transmission like the new 10 speed on the L5Ps post uh, 2021, I believe. And yes, it is the five speed and not the six speed. However, you can convert that for like $2,000. And I believe the price difference between the LLY and the LBZ, if that's why you buy the LBZ over the LLY, it's still cheaper to go the LLY and get the six speed conversion. So yes, it's a fact that the LLY has cooling issues, uh, mainly caused by the turbo inlet mouthpiece uh, that connects the downpipe to the turbo back. And it's highly restrictive, uh, but that can be remedied by a 30 to $200 uh, either S and B intake piece, which I have on my LLY, or just uh, the LBZ um, counterpart. And that fixed the cooling issues on my truck that I didn't even have. Uh, 
But number two, the LY does have the smallest factory radiator. So that is true, but if you replace that turbo mouthpiece and, and budget the 50 to 200 bucks to do that, you can install it by yourself. I have a video on that. Um, it's totally worth it. And you're still coming out ahead from the price difference between these two trucks when you're talking a five to $10,000 difference in price. All right, last one for now is parts. Uh, they are available and affordable. There are certain parts on, you know, these newer trucks that, uh, that are on back order because of the semiconductor shortage or a material shortage. And the LOY is old enough to have parts available, but it's not new enough to where they're not readily made yet and hard to, and expensive. So um, it's kind of in that sweet spot um, to where parts are affordable and available. Okay, so moving on to the opinion side. Number one, I believe the LLY has the best no-tune throttle response, hands down. I've driven the LB7, I own an LLY. I've also driven the LBZ, I've driven the LML and L5P. So going back to the DPF and DEF emissions, um, all this new emissions stuff on these newer trucks, it really chokes them up. Yes, they're more powerful, yes, they make more torque, but um, when you when you are at a stoplight and you slam that throttle, the LLY will jump an L5P all week long, no tune, no questions asked. Um, so I've driven all these generations uh, with the exception of the LMM. One other thing to add, um, which is why this is on the opinion side, uh, I do have the five inch straight pipe exhaust on my LLY. And no, there's no tune on it. And yes, that helped the throttle response, but I still believe the factory LLY would, um, would gap any other Duramax any day of the week. Um, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, prove me wrong on that. Uh, that's just what I've noticed driving my truck. Yes you can put a straight pipe exhaust on a modern Duramax post DPF and get better throttle response. But not only do you have um, that, but you will have to then tune it because that will throw an engine light, a check engine light. And that's just more cost, uh, not to mention illegal. So um, that's why I also believe the LOY is one of the best because you don't, it, no tunes required you can still put an exhaust on it where you don't have um, emissions requirements. Opinion number two, this is the uh, most comfortable interior Duramax generation truck that I have ever experienced. And that is kind of because it was ahead of its time in many ways. Uh, you, had the, you had the bucket seats with the armrest and you had heated seats which weren't necessarily new at the time but in trucks, it was pretty uncommon. And even today, the L5P, you can't get heated seats below Denali because of the chip shortage. They removed that option. So now all you get is a blank button in its place. And this truck here is 18, 20 years old. It's got, you know, pretty much basically the same features of a new model um, for the most part. Now, yeah, you don't have a heads up display. You don't have adaptive cruise control. You don't have, you know, these cameras, but largely it's the same truck with the same options. You have dual zone climate control. You've got leather heated seats. You've got power seats, power mirrors, heated mirrors, power um, telescoping mirrors. You have um, DVD players. You have all sorts of things that um, are largely still in modern trucks and these trucks can still kind of are kind of competing with current model year trucks. Now I know the 2023 um, interior of the GM half tons is has been refreshed and that seems to kind of take this to a next level. Um, but for the current year, yeah, I mean, why, why pay more for kind of the same thing in a different shape with a few more, you know, newer technology improvements. Number three, so this one is again debatable, but I would rather replace head gaskets than pistons. So I'm comparing this to the LBZ directly right now because that seems to be the favorite um, among the diesel community. 
Uh, so that's why I'm comparing that with that. But the LLY is prone to having head gasket issues, um, but the LBZ is known to ha having uh, piston issues. On the LLY, they were made uh, by Mali, uh, but the LBZ, they're made in China, and they, that is one of the top complaints for the LBZ, albeit a small one. So y'all will have to fact check me on number four, but I believe the LLY uh, still has the uh, water pump with metal impellers. The LBZ switched to plastic impellers. Number five, this truck is reliable. It has been reliable. And I believe most other Duramax generations are. So I hate to, I hate to pick on the other Duramax generations, but the LLY, I believe, is one of the most reliable. And that's because you don't have the exhaust issues. That's because it doesn't have transmission issues. So yes, these are getting older and they are starting to have more rust, but mechanically, these are reliable trucks. Even if you didn't get the six speed transmission upgrade, even if you didn't get the turbo inlet mouthpiece by SMB or for the LBZ, even if you didn't do those things, this truck would still be reliable. Um, you just wouldn't be able to push it as hard towing at max capacity in the mountains. Uh, you know, this truck, you know, like I've said before, it's, it's still pre-emissions like the LBZ. So it's, it's all of that without the price tag, basically. Uh, I've had this truck going on four years and, you know, dozens of thousands of miles. It doesn't get driven that much, but I've, I've towed, off-roaded, you know, highway, city, stop and go. This truck, I mean, it's never let me down. Yeah, I've had to put two new batteries in it, and yeah, it's lost prime on me uh, twice, but it doesn't have a lift pump. And pre-L5P, Duramax didn't have a lift pump. That doesn't make this one the worst just because of that. So, so another opinion, number six is looks, in my opinion, this is the best looking Duramax generation yet. Uh, it's the most aggressive for sure. And yes, there are certain colors in these model years that you couldn't get on other years of truck. So um, like the color that my truck is, which is dark spiral gray metallic. And you know, I, I wanted white. I still want a pure summit white truck, but that's the truck it was. And I've fallen in love with it because it's different. Yeah, it might look like, you know, a new shadow gray, but on all these modern trucks, you're only going to get your, your grays, blacks, and whites, and, you know, maybe a blue and a red, but you didn't have, you know, the green, have the dark spiral gray, kind of the blue, blue, green, gray, brown. Um, yeah, so that's another opinion. So another reason why the LY is the best is it will run on low sulfur diesel as well as ultra low sulfur diesel. So I think it was back in 2007 and a half time frame when ULSD was put into law, um, thus making all old diesels uh, run on it as well. And it's, and it's more expensive because of that, D uh, diesel fuel is, and it's less, it has less lubricity. So why is this on here? So number one is you can run red dye diesel if this is just a farm truck used for off-road use. Now, I've heard that red dye diesel is still ultra low sulfur diesel, but I don't know if there's, there might be places that you can still buy low sulfur diesel for off-road use only. Um, I'm not sure, but another reason why this is on here. Uh, you can convert this truck to run a vegetable oil or cooking oil. And there's a couple websites, if you do Google search, that will sell a conversion kit to run on used cooking oil that you can pick up for free from fast food restaurants, which are obviously plentiful here in the USA. And once you install that kit, you have free fuel for as long as people are eating French fries. So that is definitely a positive for the LOI because with current regulations, how long is diesel fuel gonna be made before you know it's outlawed? It just gives you more flexibility for the future. I mean, this is truly a forever truck if you want it to be. All right, going down to number eight to close this thing out. So why is it the best opinion number eight? Yes, I own one and yeah, I'm probably biased. 
So um, please call me out on everything I have correct or wrong, everything you agree with or disagree with. Yeah, drop a comment. Uh, I know Truckmaster07 came out with a video a couple months back on which was the worst Duramax generation and he was picking on the LLY and uh, no disrespect, but I disagree. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. This is what I could come up with. Thank you for watching if you made it this far and uh, see you in the next one.